Welcome to the Eucharistic Liturgy of the Sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please turn off or silence your cell phones oh, at this time. Oh, Mindful of COVID-19, please remember to take all precautions to keep each other safe and healthy. As today's collection is taken up by the ushers, we have a special basket for all the children and invite them to come forward. Please stand as we begin the celebration. Please join us in our opening hymn, number 763 in the Green Books. Veno Banquete, come to the feast, number 763 in the Green Books. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Father Janish, and I'm helping out today. And I'm always help, happy to help out at St. Luke's because um, my second assignment as was here at St. Luke's, but that goes back 1969 to 72, so. <laughs> so, you need to be pretty old to remember me if you were here at that time. Uh, and um, when I was here, the church, I see, there was, this was the church, the altar was there, and the, that was the doors over there out. So, it's very small, and I think, I'm not sure, maybe, uh, Father Hennessy was pastor when the church was, uh, you know, added on to. So, oh, and um, we're not pulling for the Philadelphia Eagles today. <laughs> <laughs> the church is not pulling for them. We're wearing green because it's the color, of the liturgical color. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. To Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have, mercy. have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have come that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Blessed are they. good to your servant, that I may live and keep your words. Open my eyes, that I may consider the wonders of your love. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Give me discernment, that I may observe your law, and keep it with all my heart. Blessed
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the pro or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar and go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, 
cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The higher love, to be devoted, devoted to. So those are a couple of phrases to keep in our minds as we consider the readings for today. Of course, there are many others too, but just those two for today. The higher love and devotedness. Well. One of the things that's going on right now is that we're receiving the documents, at least I am, I don't know, I guess you are too, that we need to file our, uh, with which we need to file our taxes, uh, W-2s and different kinds of, what, 99s, um, you know, uh, to file the taxes. And... Um, in regard to the higher love or the devotedness, well, what that means is to avoid the minimum we can do, you know, the minimum. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I certainly um, take the attitude at least in paying taxes to do the least I can, you know, uh, and I think most of us do. And, you know, that's a proper attitude, I think, to take in regard to taxes. Uh, you can pay more if you want, but uh, no, no, nothing, no, no law against it, but most of us take the attitude of the least I can get away with in regard to taxes without causing myself any legal problems in the future. Uh, and I think, you know, that's certainly fine, practi practical, good idea. One of the other events that's going on right now, well, but two days, Valentine's Day. Um, and that's especially connected with reflecting on the relationships that we have uh, where there's a emotional connection, commitment uh, uh, to, to another person or to people, you know, all the way from friendships to uh, dating, marriage, and um, there is not such a good idea to have the least I can get away with, you know. Uh, uh, call upon the, the higher love, the, the, um, to be devoted to, to do more than the minimum. Bring a dozen roses instead of one, you know. Um, for example. Just kidding, but anyway, see the... But, you know, there's a truth to it, too, isn't there, you know? And, uh, well, as everyone can attest that's been in long-term, like, marriages and relationships, friendships, too, there, there are times, you know, when it's just hanging in there for dear life, you know, and, uh, but still, uh, always with the idea of the more, 
the higher, the, to be devoted. Now we talk about, the, in the scriptures, the golden rule, and this is sometimes used in marriage preparation classes, this kind of comparison, the golden rule. Treat others as you would have them treat you. And then there's another rule, the platinum rule. Well, first the golden rule. It's good, uh, but there is a limitation to it or, or a thought about its limitation. Uh, what if I don't think much of myself? Treat others, you know, uh, hate myself or have uh, poor self-image, well, treat others. I want them to treat me badly, so I'm, I'm going to treat them badly because I don't think much of myself. So it's, a, it's a kind of sobering to see how, in how many of those cases of, uh, that make the news in regard to violence and, uh, and um, even mass violence or even you know, individual, I don't know. It only makes the news if somebody kills 10 people. If you kill one person, well, uh, uh, but same thing. I don't think, so often, I don't think much of myself or it's a terrible situation in regard to my own life. And so I treat them badly because I wouldn't them to treat me badly. So the, the platinum rule, that's the one finally that Jesus gave us. And he said, love one another as I love you. Love one another as I love you. Whether they deserve it or not regardless of what I think about myself or don't think about myself. Love one another as I have loved you. So that, uh, and then uh, tying that in with a thought about devotedness, to be devoted, the higher love. To love like Jesus loved, as I love you. Well, this is a thought from St. Francis de Sales he says, genuine living, genuine living devotion presupposes love of God, and hence it is simply true love of God. Yet it is not always love in su as such. Inasmuch as divine love adorns the soul, it is called grace. I think that was mentioned in the opening prayer, too which makes us pleasing to God's divine majesty. Inasmuch as it strengthens us to do good, it is called charity. When it has reached a degree of perfection at which it, it not only makes us do good, but also do the good carefully, frequently, and promptly, it is called devotion. In addition, it arouses us to do quickly and lovingly as many good works as possible, both those commanded and those merely counseled or inspired. So in regard to then the, um, the higher love, the platinum rule, devotedness, to be devoted. I don't know if you thought about it, but you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we notice in uh, obituaries or uh, write-ups about people who have died. Uh, he was devoted to his wife. That's one of the nicest things to say, isn't it? Devoted to his wife. Not how much money he made or. Was a general or a colonel or or or, or um, professor or whatever? He was devoted to his wife. She was devoted to her husband. They were devoted to their children or their family. He, she, um, and um, a devoted Christian. You know, it's more than just the minimum. It's not. 
In regard to spirituality, we have to be careful about that, what I call minimalism, getting by with it. That's what Jesus is talking about in all the, I won't go into all the details of it, but, uh, you know, to do more than the minimum or to aspire to do more than the minimum. And, and, and all kidding aside about, uh, you know, paying the least we can in taxes, which is fine, uh, there is a, a beautiful point, too, to say devoted to the country, a patriot, in other words, a devoted uh, citizen, uh, a beautiful thought there. So in regard, in summary, uh, to um, be careful, there's times when it's, uh, when it's appropriate to do the minimum, but uh, finally, we're also called to do more, to be devoted. Dismissal of the catechumens and the candidates. Please come, please come forward. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, this community sends you to reflect more deeply on the word of God which we have shared with you today. Count on our loving support and prayers. We look forward to the day when we can share fully at the Lord's table. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers before our merciful Father. For Pope Francis and all bishops, may the Lord grant them wisdom to lead us in his ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local and national leaders, may God, may God guide them in working for peace and justice we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from the world's sins and injustices, may the Holy Spirit surround and protect them, and may world leaders bring an end to war and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that nourished by this Eucharist, we may desire to give of ourselves in ways that manifest Christ to the world, most especially through the gifts of the 2023 Archbishop's Appeal for Ministries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in southern Turkey and Syria who are suffering as a result of the massive earthquake, may the support of relief agencies, neighbors, and loved ones who come to their aid provide them the care and support they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal petitions, for those who have asked for our prayers, for those whose names are written in our prayer request book, and for those who have recently died, Armando Andy Ceballos, Annalisa Rodriguez Flores, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions of this Mass, for the eternal repose of Gerardo Jerry Vasquez, Edgar Rene Rodas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. <laughs> Please join us in our offertory hymn, number 486 in the Blue Books, Deep Within, number 486 in the Blue Books. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will 
the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sin by his rising from the dead. He has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like to dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gustavo our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Rosendo. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
pray this act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are not able to join us. And we pray, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join us in our communion hymn, number 791 in the Green Books. Gift of Finest Wheat, number 791 in the Green Books. and share the blood of Christ our Lord. Do not one cup of blood our others in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest meat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread Mystery of your presence, Lord. No 
Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. But today's second collection is for St. Vincent de Paul, and we ask the ushers to come up and do that. St. Vincent de Paul is such a beautiful organization, ministry, that uh, helps so many people uh, in times of need. So we ask your, uh, your prayerful thought on uh, donating to St. Vincent de Paul today. This weekend, along with all parishes in the Archdiocese, we are once again inviting you to participate in the Archbishop's Appeal for Ministries. This year, the goal is to raise $5 million. Here's the important part. Any gift, any amount, will help us get to that $5 million. Like it was stated in the gospel and in the homily today, you can do, this is not like the IRS. <laughs> where you, I know, like at home, I got the envelope on my desk. I just got it. I can A, do nothing, mm. or B, I can do something. And I can try to do something that makes me devoted and helps so many people. I was helped as a deacon by the Archbishop's Appeal. It helps for the formation 
Ross Cantu, who will be ordained this June. He, he benefited from the Archbishop's Appeal and so many other ministries. So when you're leaving, there's a table in the foyer for more information. Please stop by or go by the parish website and find ways to contribute to the campaign. So please uh, think about what you can do. The Guadalupanos are selling uh, tickets in the uh, foyer for the spaghetti dinner that will take place next Sunday from 11 to 3.30. So, you know, go enjoy the Super Bowl, go enjoy all the food you're going to eat and everything, but save a little bit of corner there for the spaghetti dinner next week, okay? Um, as you may know by now, Lent begins February 22nd with Ash Wednesday, and um, the services are posted in, in the bulletin and online. So please look at all those services that we offer for you to come get uh, ashes and celebrate Ash Wednesday. The next Mass for the anointing of the sick is Monday, February 13th at the 12 noon Mass. So please come by and, uh, and attend that. As of now, we always do the traveling chalice. And uh, I, I have to bring up a very special uh, people, Philip and Cass Cassandra. Where are they? I saw them at communion. There they are. Philip's here. So uh, she went to RCIA, right? That's right. She was dismissed. Uh, they just celebrated their marriage, had their marriage convalidated. <laughs> and I have to say that uh, my wife and I were their mentor couple, uh, helped them get through their marriage prep. So let us uh, open the back of our books and say the, the prayer for uh, vocations, so important. And let us pray together. God, in baptism, you called us by name and made us members of your people, the church. Guide us to know our vocation in life and to respond by living your spirit of holiness. For your greater glory and for the service of your people, raise up dedicated and generous members who will serve their lives as women and men, religious, priests, deacons, married or single. Send your spirit to guide and strengthen us so we may serve your people, following the example of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer this prayer. Amen. Let's give him a, and his, his wife who's over there a round of applause. All right, as always, uh, we like to invite any visitors. Are there any visitors that came to St. Luke's today um, to, that came to visit? Anyone? Anyone? Whether you're from out of town or from another parish? Man, look at all these parishioners we have. That's fantastic. But um, thank you for, for coming, all of you who are regulars. Thank you for being here. Um, how about anniversaries or birthdays? Anybody celebrating anniversaries or birthdays this week? Please stand up. Your birthday? Anniversary? How many years? 31 beautiful years. Your birthday? Got a birthday way back there, a couple of birthdays in the back. So let us all extend our hands and uh, say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the sacraments of marriage. We ask you to help all of these people and all of us to go through life spreading the gospel and treating everybody as love as you love us. So we ask, your, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Did I forget to say that Father Joel and Father Jorge and the whole parish staff want to wish each and every one of you a happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. And thank you, Father Yanis, for serving here today. I'll please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My sisters and brothers, the Mass has ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join us in our closing hymn number 624 in the Green Books. Your grace is enough, number 624.
Yeah, your grace is enough. 